Born in the slums of Flea Bottom, Dunk, as he was known, never knew his parents, and so as a child survived by any means necessary, befriending other street children and working together to collect meat from anything they could catch, to sell to local shops who used it in the bowls of brown commonly consumed by the residents of the impoverished area. As a youth, he met Sir Arlen of Pennytree, a hedge knight who took him on as a squire, teaching him of combat and knighthood as they traveled throughout the Seven Kingdoms, attending tournaments, or else contracting with local lords for a time. Although Dunk was a self-described monster in his childhood, Sir Arlen's humility and optimism proved a positive influence. The two traveled together for many years, serving with the forces of House Dondarrion in 206 AC as they confronted a rebel vulture king in Dorne, defeating and executing the traitor. In 209 AC, Sir Arlen died of a chill as they journeyed to a tournament in Ashford Meadow, and so Dunk buried his mentor, inheriting his armor, weapons, and horses. Continuing on the journey, Dunk then encountered a young bald-headed boy named Egg, and at the boy's request, made him his squire. Once arrived at Ashford Meadow, he claimed Sir Arlen knighted him before his death, though many believe this was actually a lie, as no witnesses were present to dispute the claim. And while he had some difficulty in verifying the existence of Sir Arlen of Pennytree, he was eventually allowed to compete when Prince Baylor Breakspear Targaryen spoke for him, having once fought a memorable joust against the old hedge knight. Sir Duncan then sold one of the horses to purchase new armor, and paid Tanzel Tutal, a Dornish puppeteer, to paint a sigil on his shield, choosing a shooting star above an elm tree over a sunset field. Tanzel is later attacked by Prince Arion Targaryen, who took offense at the death of a dragon in one of her puppet shows, until Sir Duncan intervened, striking Arion down to protect the girl. However, the prince's guards quickly captured Dunk and would have harmed him greatly, if not for the revelation that the young boy Egg was in fact Prince Aegon Targaryen, grandson of the king and younger brother of Arion. Aegon was able to protect Sir Duncan from immediate punishment, but the knight was still arrested and sent to the loss of a hand. Sir Duncan then demanded trial by combat, which Arion made a trial by seven, likely fearing that he would lose a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. With the help of young Aegon, Sir Duncan assembled five of the six men he would need. In Sir Stephen Fossaway, Sir Humphrey Harding, Sir Humphrey Beesbury, Sir Robin Risling, and the Laughing Storm, Sir Lionel Baratheon. But Sir Stephen betrayed his word and switched over to Prince Arion's side when promised a lordship. Outraged by the dishonor, Raymond Fossaway was knighted by Sir Lionel Baratheon, so he might replace his cousin Stefan in the trial. Still short one man, Sir Duncan made an appeal to the crowd, with Baylor Breakspear, heir to the Iron Throne, becoming his final champion. Prince Arion then lined up his own team, including his brother Dayron and father Makar, as well as Sir Stefan Fossaway, and three Kingsguard in Willem Wilde, Donal of Duskendale, and Roland Craighall. Although Dunk's inexperience in this form of combat nearly cost him his life, he proved victorious by using his superior strength and wrestling to defeat the prince. But much to Dunk's regret, both Sir Humphrey Harding and Humphrey Beesbury were killed in the fighting, as well as Prince Baylor Breakspear, who initially survived the trial, but received a terrible head wound, dying soon after. Nevertheless, Dunk had proven himself an honorable knight, with Prince Makar, father of Arion and Aegon, expressing regret for his eldest son's actions, and asking that his youngest son be allowed to continue continue on as Sir Duncan's squire so he might learn from a positive influence. Duncan agreed, but stipulated that he must be allowed to continue working as a hedge knight so Aegon can learn humility and the struggles of the small folk. Makar agreed, yet insisted that his son go by the nickname Egg to avoid the political scandal of having a Targaryen prince mixing with hedge knights and commoners. After the tournament, Dunk and Egg went in search of the Dornish woman, Tanzel Tutal, losing one of their horses as they traveled through Dorne, later replaced by a mule named Maester. During a journey to Old Town, their ship was raided by pirates, allowing for young Aegon's first experience in combat at sea. They then went to work for Sir Eustace Osgrey of Standfast, who was in conflict with House Weber of Coldmoat over rights to the Checky Waters. Dunk found that he had a romantic connection with Lady Rohan Weber and ultimately wanted to quit his service to Sir Eustace after discovering he had sided with the Blackfires in the first Blackfire Rebellion. But upon seeing how badly House Weber outnumbered the Osgrey forces, Sir Duncan chose to stay, asking for a trial by combat to decide the issue. The Hedge Knight fought Sir Lucas Longinch in a vicious battle that saw Sir Duncan almost drown but ultimately victorious. Yet when he recovered from his injuries, he learned that Sir Eustace and Lady Rohan had settled their dispute through a marriage alliance. Feeling betrayed and rejected, Duncan refused the position they offered him as captain of their guard, and even refused the horse offered by Lady Rohan as an apology, instead merely kissing her passionately before departing. Sometime later, Duncan Egg began to journey north, having heard that Lord Baron Stark was hiring warriors to 
help defend the coast from ironborn raiders. But along the way, they met a number of lords and knights traveling to White Walls for the wedding of Lord Ambrose Butterwell to a daughter of House Frey. A hedge knight named John the Fiddler then invited him along telling him of the tourney to be held with a dragon egg as the grand prize. John the Fiddler then later informed Duncan that he sometimes has prophetic dreams and saw a vision of the tall knight one day wearing the armor of the King's Guard. As they joined the festivities, young Aegon noticed that many of those in attendance were once supporters of Daemon Blackfire during his rebellion years earlier and grew suspicious. Meanwhile, Dunk joined the tournament only to be defeated and nearly killed in the first round. In accordance with tradition, Sir Duncan now had to give his arms and armor over to Sir Uther Underleaf, who defeated him, and unfortunately lacked the coin to ransom it back. In addition, Sir Uther warned him of a potential threat, revealing that someone offered a bribe to kill the Hedge Knight during their joust. Sir Duncan then learned that the Dragon Egg had been stolen, with his friend Sir Glendon Ball arrested for the crime. Lord Alan Cockshaw then attacked the Hedge Knight, revealing he was behind the bribe to Sir Uther, jealous of the attention Dunk had received from John the Fiddler. And while Duncan was injured in the attack, he managed to defeat his assailant by throwing him down a well. With events quickly spiraling out of control, Duncan sought his squire, finding him as he confronted Lord Ambrose Butterwell, claiming that he knew of their Blackfire connection, even falsely claiming that his father Prince Makar was on his way with an army. Duncan is then forced to kill Black Tom Heddle, who attacked young Aegon. And while Egg fled, the Hedge Knight distracted John the Fiddler, who was now revealed to be Daemon Blackfire II, gathering supporters at White Walls for a second Blackfire Rebellion. Dunk claimed that Sir Glendon Ball had been falsely arrested by the Blackfire supporter Lord Gorman Peak concerning the theft of the Dragon Egg. And so Daemon called for a trial by combat to prove the issue. However, Daemon Blackfire II was soundly defeated in the fight, even knocked into the mud, causing those in attendance to snicker and nick name him the Brown Dragon. Hand of the King, Brynden Rivers, also known as Bloodraven, then arrived at the castle with an army of Targaryen loyalists, having already been alerted by his informants of the potential Blackfire supporters being gathered. And while Daemon Blackfire attempted to rally the soldiers of the castle and knights in attendance to join his cause, he found no support with his defeat in single combat having lost him credibility. Desperate, he then challenged Bloodraven to single combat, but was instead arrested and taken into custody. Gorman Peak was then executed for his support of the Blackfires, and Lord Butterwell stripped of nine-tenths of his family wealth, as well as losing White Walls, which was torn down. Young Aegon also insisted that those that stood against the rebellion be rewarded, and so Duncan was given the coin needed to ransom back his equipment from Sir Uther, and was informed that it was Bloodraven who arranged for the Dragon Egg to be stolen. The Hedge Knight and his squire then continued on their journey, heading north, where some claim he became involved with a woman of Winterfell, after Bran Stark decades later saw a vision of the past in which a tall man kissed a slender, brown-haired girl in front of a heart tree. This has led some to speculate that the woman may have been Old Nan, and that Hodor is therefore a descendant of Sir Duncan. Now known to all of Westeros as Sir Duncan the Tall, he went on to prove Daemon Blackfire's vision true by becoming a Kingsguard, and later Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, in order to continue protecting his friend and former squire, Egg, who grew up to become King Aegon V. In honor of his mentor and old friend, Aegon named his firstborn son and heir Duncan, becoming known as Duncan the Small. The former Hedge Knight would go on to proudly serve his king in any way needed, from personally escorting Lord Bloodraven and Maester Aemon to the Wall when they took their vows for the Night's Watch, to fighting alongside Targaryen forces in the Fourth Blackfyre Rebellion, killing Daemon Blackfyre III in single combat. When Prince Duncan the Small broke off his betrothal to the daughter of Lord Lionel Baratheon in favor of marrying a common woman named Jenny of Oldstones, the Baratheon Lord was outraged, declaring himself Storm King in open rebellion against the Iron Throne. To avoid further bloodshed, Sir Duncan the Tall fought the Laughing Storm in a trial by combat, defeating him and ending the rebellion. In 253 AC, Lord Commander Duncan was defeated at a winter tourney by a mystery knight, who was later revealed to be a 16-year-old Barristan Selmy, who was knighted for his exceptional performance. For years, King Aegon ruled as a just and beloved ruler, having learned many lessons from his days as a squire, implementing new rights for the common people and working on their behalf. However, it all came to an end in 259 AC during the tragedy at Summerhall, where many believe a ritual to hatch dragon eggs went awry, causing an explosion and devastating fire which killed the king and his firstborn son. Lord Commander Duncan was also killed during the event, but the writings of Archmaester Gildane 
suggest that he may have had a role in saving others before his own demise. Although much of the story was lost when ink spilled on the Archmaester's writings, the surviving fragments claim others may have died but for the valor of the Lord Commander. This has led some to speculate that perhaps upon seeing the death of the King, the Prince, and much of the royal court, Sir Duncan concerned himself with ensuring that the King's granddaughter, Rhaella Targaryen, and her newborn son Rhaegar escaped the flames. And while Sir Duncan may have died at Summerhall, his legacy lives on, with some now convinced that the tall female warrior Brienne of Tarth may be one of his descendants, as evidenced by a shield with Sir Duncan's sigil found decades later in Brienne's childhood home of Evanfall Hall.